Okay. Uh, good morning, America. Good morning, Jack. Good afternoon, Manchester. Um, as has been mentioned, we're just about celebrating the 71st birthday, and sadly, it's uh, online. The only thing is that uh, I regard virtual Manchester as Manchester without the rain, which may be a, a benefit there. Um, hello. Oh, right. Um, I, as on the tin, uh, my, my talk is about Jack the Man. It's not a technical talk. I did mention that. I did pre-warn you. Um, so um, I will continue if uh, this, yeah. Okay, when I saw the title, I thought, well, I better say something, even if it's not a technical talk. And there were so many great talks coming up. I thought, this is no problem. I'll just go to the abstracts for these talks uh, and I'll take a line from each. Well, um, it's interesting. You check through them. There's not a lot on the new directions in the abstract, so I'm looking forward to hearing the full talks. So all I did was throw together a few uh, random comments, and uh, there they are. It's really nothing, um, uh, nothing particularly new. They're all things that are happening just now, but I think they've got a good uh, um, uh, light life scale. I think I think they'll continue some of these issues. In the issue of high performance computing, that's all a bit more um, foggy, if you want to call it that. Is is uh, our quantum computers going to really work? Well, that's a big issue, and computing, of course, is trying to combine them uh, with uh, with regular HPC machines. So, is that going to happen? I don't know. And it's quite amusing. There's a cyclic thing in high performance computing. Only a year or so ago, I was being told by somebody who's very good that vectorization was the end thing, which I thought we had all killed in the 1980s. But there we are. Um, in, in my abstract, I mentioned this about a nerd index. It's quite important, um, and it gives me a chance to show a picture of my two kids there. This is when they were teenagers, and they were very sweet then, of course, still are. But the nerd index is an interesting thing. Uh, they came to conferences a lot until they left home about uh, the year 2000. So if you think back there, They've got an nerd index assigned to people, but they'll nearly only be people over 40. And were we in a, an open plan meeting, a proper meeting, I would be asking for hands up as to who's over 40. And I'm interested in the participants, and probably half are over 40, I would guess, maybe more. Uh, anyway, so you've got an nerd index associated with you, and the great thing is that uh, Jack's nerd index is very low, and that should be regarded as a compliment, and I hope this will show as we continue with the talk. So let's do the nerdy stuff uh, first. Um, I asked Jack for his CV and, uh, <clears throat> well, I got 100 pages. Had I asked the following day, it would probably be 105 pages. I mean, it's just amazing. It's action-packed stuff. It's exhausting to read, yet alone to write, yet alone to have done all that work. And it, it, it's just uh, astronomical, it's just fantastic. I mean, if, if you look at your own uh, H indices and that, you feel very humble. And Jack's got fantastic record. Uh, look at the number of journal publications. That's as high as almost any that you hear of. And 291 presentations since 2006, totally amazing. So what I'm trying to show in this talk is that Jack isn't just this, Jack is also a human. Um, I should say that one thing he missed was my favorite, one of my favorite reports. This was the first report I had with Jack. I did plenty of stuff later. Um, and this was when I was at Argonne from 1984 to 85. Um, and uh, what, the thing I was particularly proud about this was that this appeared as the uh, index or the appendix, should I say, in this federal supercomputing program and policies. So I like to think I had a US government uh, connection uh, way back in 1985 when uh, both Jack and me were quite young, uh, or young girl anyway. Uh, and uh, the interesting thing here, um, I should have mentioned that I'm using photographs. I've got a problem trying to get full screen here because my photographs took up too many megabytes for the bandwidth. Um, so do try and use it as full screen as you can because many photographs will want to study a bit. But um, uh, but the trouble when you go full screen is that it's hard to do your email at the same time as the talk, so I can understand that. Now, continuing, uh, if you look at the dates there, this is a good test of your eyesight, uh, the federal one was in June 85, right? And the one from Argonne was in October. So this might say something about the relationship of DOE labs and the federal government. Rather interesting how they managed to get preempt us in publishing um, our document. 
Well, uh, in the talk, we always acknowledge co-authors and colleagues and work associates. And I would like to acknowledge the help from, and this person has been mentioned already by, um, by Sven, uh, Sudangara. Now, um, I might be a little nervous giving a talk. I've never given online talks before. I've really eschewed that this year or this last year, and I hate, actually hate them to, the, to, the, my, to my bones. Uh, but if I'm nervous, I'm sure Sue is a lot more nervous, and I think she may even be listening to this. Okay, Sue, thank you. Well, uh, Jack is a Chicago lad and with origins in Sicily, and he's got a lot of interesting predecessors in that respect. Um, his um, father was born in Sicily, and, uh, and Jack's mother, although born in the US, her family was from Sicily, uh, and in fact was from a village only um, 20 or 30 miles from Jack's dad's village, although they, of course, didn't meet there. Uh, and uh, this is Jack's mother, they call her Ma, and this is her not, a, she just celebrated her 96th birthday last week. Uh, now, uh, this was in 1987 when she visited England. My first memory of Ma was when she came back from a shopping trip, that she just arrived in England, to a small little almost village uh, area, a small town near where we live, to do her shopping. And she was very, very perturbed to tell us that somehow they wouldn't accept her dollars. And it, she really knew that her dollars were fine. They weren't uh, counterfeit or anything. They were beautiful, clean dollars and very upset that they wouldn't accept them. Great lass. Uh, um, this is a picture of quite a lot later in 1980. Uh, well, no, not later. This is 1986. And this is of her, mostly her family, the Dankas. Um, and uh, the people I want to highlight here are, are Jack's uh, brothers. Uh, we have uh, Ron holding the wine bottle up here and uh, Bob down here. They're younger brothers of Jack. Uh, and the story here uh, is that uh, um, Ma uh, was really not understanding. And you can imagine what Jack was doing. Um, and she was on and on at him. She said, Jack, Jack, why don't you get a real job? like your brothers. Now, his two brothers are electricians, did very well, and have just retired in the profits of their company uh, recently, even though they are younger than Jack. Um, but she continued from that, and she said, Jack, Jack, why, why are you not sort of like, well, I don't know if you did well intelligent, but why don't you think more, Jack? Oh, what do you mean by that? Well, your brothers, they, they think a lot. You, Jack, you don't think, you just use the computer to think. So that shows you quite how much that Jack's mother understood quite what he's doing and his fame and fortune. But nice to bring you down to earth, Jack, and that's possibly why you're such a non-nerdy and friendly guy. Um, of course, as was mentioned by Sven, Jack was at Argonne for quite a while. He started there in 72 in an undergraduate honours participation and was there until 1989. Of course, a lot of things happened in between, uh, one of which was several visits, uh, both to New Mexico, to Stanford, Los Alamos, uh, uh, and where he was working on his thesis, which he finished in 1980. Um, so quite a long time after his first degree, but that was... Uh, uh, because of the circumstances of working at Argonne. So uh, like uh, Sven, I had a lot of trouble. These are my own photographs. Uh, so I was hunting for one with uh, the gentleman in the back left there it is indeed Jim Wilkinson. And this is in the uh, Argonne Visitor Center. Um, uh, Jack isn't unfortunately in this one. Some of his colleagues are, as you see. But um, again, it's just to emphasize the important place that Jim had in all of our lives and a very, very big place in Argonne, where he visited uh, during the period, um, well, he died in 1986, but during the earlier period that Jack was in Argonne. Um, this is the other iconic picture. Sven used it. Maybe everybody will be using it. I'm not using it for the, the, the car or for even the, the package, which I'm not going to mention even. I'll be the only person that doesn't mention it, I'm sure. I probably will slip into it and mention it by mistake. What I want to do is to mention it for the gentleman to the right of uh, Jack, whom you'll recognize immediately when he gives his talk shortly, and that's Cleve Moeller. And of course, Cleve was another big influence in Jack's life and was the supervisor of of his thesis in New Mexico. So Jack left um, uh, Chicago in 1989 for Tennessee for a joint appointment at Oak Ridge and, and the university. And I couldn't believe this. I thought, what the heck are you going from this wonderful town of Chicago that reminded me of my hometown of Glasgow in Scotland? Why would you go from there to um, some place that we hardly know? We have to look up on the map in Tennessee. Well, uh, 
he stayed there all the time, and I, I was quite sure he wouldn't stay very long, but he stayed there all the time. He's still at Tennessee. So I thought I would look on the web to find out why Tennessee is so exciting. <laughs> and what I found was this. Um, now, I don't have any idea who Wallet Hub are, but uh, what I know for sure is that this is quite wrong because indeed Jack has brought up a very happy family in Tennessee, and you'll see more of them later. Not only his own happy family, but here's another part of his happy family. Uh, so these are a bunch of guys, a traveling circus, if you like, um, from the Innovative Computing Lab team members. Uh, uh, and this, in fact, was uh, in a small meeting in a village in France, in saint Giron, And um, this is a decennial meeting that we hope to hold again next year. So really, he had two families, he had ICL and his own family. This picture, again, I'm looking for iconic pictures with stories. Anybody here will recognize this as being from Manchester just because of the angle, because we always took pictures looking down from the balcony. And I'm sure we'll see more pictures of this kind during this meeting. This was, in fact, uh, uh, the uh, gathering of the NLA FET team members in Manchester in 2018. And it was my last, uh, or yes, I guess my last uh, serious work relationship with Jack was with this. Jack was uh, there as, of course, the Turing Fellow from Manchester, where he's been since 2007. Um, so it wasn't with his uh, Tennessee hat, but this was with his Manchester hat. So there we are, and there's a group there, and many people that you'll recognize. And I think maybe some other speakers there, and certainly Nick is there, Nick Hyman. I uh, already mentioned a little bit by Sven, uh, Jack is an expert at communication. You're going to hear a talk soon about communication avoiding from Jim Demmel. Jack is not communication avoiding, he's the very opposite. You send Jack an email any time of night or day and you'll have a response almost before you've hit the send button. It's really, I do appreciate that and it really is totally amazing. Um, so there's Jack now. What's he doing? Claiming to have caught a big fish. I somehow doubt it. But if you look, and I don't know how good your camera is, you're, you're looking at this because I can't get full screen here myself. Um, in his left hand, he's holding a gizmo. And I think what he's doing is trying to get an internet connection there. I'll try to find out where the internet connection is good. And if you think that wasn't true, this is true. So this is Jack and, and my, my uh, collaborator, Sue, there again. Um, and uh, there, um, well, um, after he's had his margaritas, he disappeared off. And we didn't know what Jack was up to. He seemed to be away a lot. And so we found him hiding in a corner of the garden of this villa on the west coast of Mexico, um, sort of batting off the mosquitoes and, stand, and standing there. And uh, so we sort of said, what else up, Jack? Why are you hiding on this little corner? Well, what happened was Jack had found an internet connection from the neighbors, which wasn't uh, protected. So he was able to get onto the internet there. And none of the rest of us had a clue. We just abandoned internet when we were in that villa. So this is the communication. This communication here, um, and the will love me for this, of course. I, I said, this is Bob Viroff. Um, who's been a lot, very long-term friend of Jack's. Uh, and I just said, what on earth are they talking about? I said to Sue, and Sue said, no, I have no idea what the gesturing is about between, this is for Batum Jack and Bob Veroff. But can easily imagine the spirited teasing as they often told stories about each other from their days of sharing an apartment near our gone. And then briefly living together in our Donald's Grove house until I officially replaced Bob once we were married. Obviously, in those few months after we bought the house, but before we were married, it was sometimes the case of the three of us sharing the house unofficially, because, of course, I was a very respectable young woman, so we wouldn't move in for real until we were married. And, of course, Sven showed you a picture of them being married. So they did get married, and then she moved in for full. Um, well, um, I don't know whether I, I, this is a picture of Jack engaging again, communicating again with the gentleman he's communicating with my daughter's future father-in-law. Now, normally I wouldn't have been too worried, uh, but this was actually the night before the wedding. Um, so happily, whatever Jack was communicating wasn't too bad and the wedding took place. Uh, one of our visits to Taiwan some time ago before they had remote uh, um, mobile telephones, um, 
uh, Jack suddenly remembered or was reminded of the fact that he had forgotten it was either Sue's birthday or perhaps their anniversary. <laughs> so he managed to persuade Taiwan uh, that they could uh, lend him or use, uh, an international phone call, quite expensive, I guess, in these days. And this is him uh, checking in with Sue uh, to make uh, amends. Now, Jack's a colonel. Um, as some of you might know, but he's not, this is, this is not a military, uh, this is not a military rank. Uh, he's in fact a colonel because of flying with uh, Delta, Delta Airlines. And I mean, the statistics there are almost as incredible as his CV. I mean, if you work out that the miles per hour is calculated by looking at the number of miles you travel over all the time of the year of 2018. And that is <laughs> beggar's belief. Um, and, and of course, what I can't understand, and I'm amazed, is Jack is, seems to have his sanity still. We'll find out later on in this meeting. But he still seems to be sane. And yet he's had 17 months without flying. I, I mean, I just can't understand how you manage it, Jack. That, that, that impresses me as much as the amount you traveled before. Anyway, the story that's coming up now is because he never has any check baggage. So this is called the story of the whiskey bottle. I'm from Scotland, so I'm quite happy to do that. There's the bottle in the centre of the table. The main participant here, Jack's taken the photograph, I think, is Pete Beckman, who's standing, uh, sitting on, on the right there with the greenish jacket. Now, Pete uh, was a good colleague, is a good colleague of, of Jack from, from Argonne, and they collaborate a lot on high-performance computing and big data. Uh, so they're here for this meeting in a chateau near Paris. Pete's checking in, and I was with him when he was checking in, and he's asking if there's a particular room that he could have. Room? I mean, the chateau's got hundreds of rooms, and they're all blooming the same, as far as I can see. So why would he particularly want a room? I had no idea. Anyway, he got the room he wanted, and Jack and him go trotting off immediately, and they come back happily with this bottle of whiskey. So what's all happened? Well, it turned out that two years, or maybe it was three years before, they'd been in the same chateau, because neither of them take check baggage, uh, they couldn't take uh, a half-empty whiskey bottle back with them. So they had secreted it in this room. Now, if you think that's amazing, that which well, is amazing, that, that, that's not the only time it happened. Apparently, they've been doing this uh, throughout many of their trips, mainly to Europe, maybe in Japan as well, and other countries. So all my advice is that if you go into a conference room that you think Jack or Pete might have been in, look very carefully. They're very good at hiding it. It was there for two or three years without being found. Um, check it out, and you may get yourself a bottle of whiskey. Um, so the story is, sorry, I'm going to come on too quickly there. The... the um, so at the end of this, there was still some whiskey in the bottle. And uh, Jack and uh, Pete were, of course, flying without any check baggage. And I was going by train back to England. Um, so they, they donated or gave me the bottle. And I thought well, it was only fair that I should uh, share it with Jack. And this is a month later, and I do not tell a lie, this is a month later in Manchester, the same whiskey bottle. So if you've got a big screen, you might be able to identify it as the same. And we're giving a toast to Peter Beckman. Uh, we talked about Jack's traveling. Of course, a lot of that is to do with going to conferences, and it's, uh, it's a tough life, Jack, and these, some of these conferences there. Is it a coffee break? Well, it was a bit more than a coffee break because uh, you're up at several thousand meters here, uh, or a few thousand. Uh, and uh, this was, of course, at, oh, well, no, of course, this was at the summer school in uh, Oberlech. IBM had wonderful summer schools um, uh, every year for a while, uh, back in the mid 80s, um, and Jack was a, a regular attendee there. Um, in this picture here, um, of course, you know immediately it's from Norway, and the reason is that we're clutching, and Jack there is clutching, uh, three, three bottles of beer. And when you consider that beer is actually more valuable than gold when you're in Norway, uh, that's the reason for doing it. Uh, so this is Tromso in 1988. We co-chaired along with Pat Gaffney on the right there uh, and um, uh, uh, other people that... that Two, two meetings, both in Lowen and in Tromso, and that was another picture from the Tromso meeting. Uh, the supercomputing, of course, is a big lot of conferences every year, huge meeting. This is really Jack's uh, uh, platform, as well, one of his main platforms, and actually part of some of these awards that he's been getting, high quality awards have been with that community and supercomputing. Could I find a picture of Jack and supercomputing? No, I could find you know, pictures of me, but not of Jack. I think the reason is that he was always off at the hospitality suites when I was looking for him, but uh, he did share it with us. Now, uh, I did have find one picture, which 
is mainly me, but Jack is appearing, uh, if you've got my uh, thing there, cursor there, down there. Uh, and this was, they had journal board meetings every time supercomputing was on. And Jack was the, the editor, and still is, is the editor of the International Journal of High Performance Computers and Applications or something like that. So it was a mouthful, very prominent journal in this, in that area. Um, um, and uh, this is another meeting um, in, in Portugal, VECPAR meeting, and I show that a bit because Satoshi uh, is there, this is the Japanese guy who is a very close collaborator with Jack and is the head of the Riken lab in Japan. We mentioned uh, Stanford, I mentioned that as one of the places Jack visited in the year when he was during Argonne, when he was collaborating with Cleve over his thesis. Of course, with Stanford, it's almost synonymous with the gentleman in yellow there. Um, who is, of course, Jean. This is Jack at a party with Jean's, and I'm partly showing this because Jean uh, had a huge influence on all of our lives, and, and certainly on Jack's and, and on mine. Um, and uh, they sh I should add further to that, that this is Jack and family, and that's little Ben there, who's I think, around 14, nearly, uh, a bit under, uh, in, in, in Jean's house. And I'm, I'm putting that in because both Jack's family uh, and my family and many other people, I'm sure, had very close relationship with Gene and we invited him to our house and he stayed in our houses in Tennessee and in England. Uh, and Sue and I have a great uh, rapport talking about Gene's story as well. This is mostly when Gene was alive, I guess, but they have great stories there, but that's another conference altogether. Um, when we're trying to find stuff for the birthday meeting, I came across this picture and there's uh, seven, well, is that, if you can, again, you can see it, there's seven candles there. And I said, what else that, uh, Sue? Because Sue's collaborating with me, as you know. Uh, I'm sure that Jack has more hair now than, than he had last year when he was 70. So, so what was that all about? Um, and she, and um, so the seven candles, uh, and she said, if I can find it, uh, I think it was just a normal birthday. The fact that there were seven candles is completely non-material as we tend to be very, she says, loosey-goosey with adult birthdays. What surprises me is to see that he was home for his birthday, a rare occurrence. Those seven candles were probably the only ones I could find in the cupboard. And Jack travels with his family a lot to meetings, particularly to ones in Anglophone countries, it's easier, and particularly England. And this is a picture of them fairly locally in Oxford at Christchurch. I'll just run through the family. You've got uh, uh, Ben on the left, Katie next, then, then it's Sue, then it's Jack, uh, and then it's Nick. So that's the people, and you'll see them again in a minute. Uh, and of course, they were going there for their Harry Potter fix, which was filmed in Christchurch. So Jack does look after his family. There he is caring for Ben and I'm meeting in Umeo in about the mid to mid, mid 80s. And in 87, this is him with, uh, with Ben when he was visiting uh, us in Harwell. Um, oh, I should, I should say, Jack goes to, um, goes, goes to bed very early. He gets up very early. Well, he doesn't go to bed early in conferences. You might not know that, but generally he goes to bed early and he's up extremely early. So when he goes to bed, of course, he isn't looking after the family so much. Uh, and this was a view in our house. And that's his two uh, sons who I'm sure will be amused by this because I think they're going to look at this at some stage. Uh, so you've got uh, uh, Nick and, and Ben in the front there, Nick, the two of them with my son Hamish. And I don't know who is leading who astray, but Jack was perfectly asleep and not really keeping an eye on them at that time. Uh, Sven showed you a picture from 2020 of Jack and the family. This is one from 2011. It's just got the three, three kids and their partners. Uh, and that's why he had these steps put into his house. Uh, there we are eight years later. Um, seven, as, as Sven said, seven grandchildren, which just goes to show that Jack or I should say Jack and Sue are productive, not only uh, in uh, mathematics. So we're going to raise a toast. We're just coming to the end here uh, to Jack and Sue, and this is Sue and Jack uh, greeting us back there. Thank you. And uh, a couple of pictures here just to show that Jack did have hair once, uh, and this is in the mid eighties um, in two, two, two meetings there. So um, the summary is that Jack has this outstanding record. I mean, it makes you wonder if the guy could be human. Fantastic. He is inspirational in the sense that he inspires people, whether it's the group at, uh, whether it's his group at Tennessee or whether it's a conference, he's, he's magnificent. He's got a low nerd index. And the great thing is that means he communicates with everybody and anybody and gets through to them. Abundant energy is, is clearly the case from all his traveling he does, for example. No nonsense. He just 
it's on the, as on the tin, as we say, it really is as he is. A great family, as I hope I've sort of partly shown, and really it's friendship, life and happiness in his visits and talks. I get no pretensions. And it's really been, as Sven said as well, a pleasure to know Jack and to work with him over these years. And I should say his wife there, and I would say this, even his wife, um, is a real, a real rock, and that's uh, Sue. So there we are, unpretentious Jack, I would say, Thank you, Jack, for all the years of friendship and everything, and happy birthday to you, whatever birthday it may be.